Anything can be acquired. Anything your heart desires. Come inside. And so we got our last HHN Hollywood announcement today. Pandora's box. Um, I don't know if that's the official title. It's something. Like it's that. the Curse of Pandora's box. The Curse of Pandora's box. Um, so that was the final announcement. Now everything's announced at HHN this year. We're here with uh, my co-host Eddie Tamit for this show, and we are going to compare and contrast each lineups. Uh, what's going to be better? What's not going to be better? Uh, he's doing some karate shit over there. So you know. Yo, you got it. You got to hit them with the welcome back to East versus West where you get a dose of both coast. There you go. You heard it here. The <laughs> dose of both coast. The dose. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're, we are uh, – we got the last announcement for Hollywood today, and it's, a, it's an original, which I'm happy about because it looks like the event's leaning towards more originals this year. Um, we have three original mazes coming to the event this year. Um, well, one of them's an original. One of them's kind of an IP. Yeah, Frankenstein. Frankenstein versus the Wolfman, but it's just their very own take on it. Just kind of how Universal Monsters last year was an original, but at the same time was an IP. Um, it was just their take on the Universal Monsters and stuff like that. Going into this event, what do you think of uh, the Curse of Pandora's box? That's for me, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of skeptical because we don't really have a lot of details. Obviously, if you're familiar with Greek mythology, we know with Pandora's box. Or did you read the synopsis that came out today about it? Yeah, I did, but now I forgot it. But I know that I know that we're gonna begin entering into a shop, basically, and there's gonna be the box in there, enticed to open it via the audio, and then we're going into like Hades and a few other places in Greek mythology. I'm excited. I don't know. Like, I want to. Like, I think I'll be excited if we get some like character, like pictures, maybe a little bit more details. But I'm currently kind of like mm, I don't know how I feel. Because, like, I feel like the rest of the lineup is so stacked that I was like, I don't know if this is... I mean, outside of The Walking Dead, I think this may be... It's the best maze. What are you talking about? That is the best maze. Because, I mean, it's in a category of its own. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know if, like... I don't know why I, I want to rank this one in terms of, like, how anticipated it is in my book. I'm really much looking forward to it only because, like... I like Greek mythology for one, and I mean I like Greek mythology too. Like I don't let that don't let that get twisted. Yeah, and uh, I, I I don't know. I just I I love IPs, but I think originals have their like their own place to prove something. Because with an IP, you kind of already expect what to kind of expect in the maze. No, I agree. Like I loved holiday. Like I loved hearing about holidays in hell because of like being able to see some stuff, mm -hmm. and then the same thing with like. Frankenstein um, versus the Wolfman because I know they did so great with Universal Monsters last year that I'm like okay cool like another IP like but I'm also kind of like man I don't know how to feel about this because I think they're going to take the Greek mythology and take it a totally different direction which is what I, I'm kind of like I don't know how to feel yeah I, I feel you Eddie you have any thoughts on today's announcement for HHN Hollywood I mean just overall the backstory to Pandora's box and uh, what are those boxes called? They're called. They have like a name for them. I know that's been like on like different like ghost adventure shows and things like that. They're called like Giddick's box or something like that. I don't know. There's uh, oh Dibic boxes, which I think are like boxes that hold like demons and stuff like that. Like in spirits them. and stuff. Yeah. So that's basically like what Pandora's box has kind of like become to some degree. So like it has some pretty cool backstory, but I. I I don't know. I don't. I don't know about this one. It, it looks like a, a cool original, and I would definitely like just looking at your lineup, which I am right now. I, I'd probably put it like very close to top five, if not like number six or seven in your lineup. I know. Um, actually, a lot of people when this got announced today, it's been a lot of backlash today, a little bit about it, because like everybody was like, all the announcements seem great, and we ended it with this maze, and I'm like, 
Well, it's an original for one. That's what I'm looking forward to. Like I said, Greek mythology, I'm all for. Um, they were waiting for a third Rob Zombie property. You just why you hate? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he didn't like Rob he won Halloween too. Yeah, whatever. Your favorite one, right? Halloween hmm? too. Yeah, right. Yeah. He ruined that thing. He put a unicorn. His mom wrote it in a unicorn while he was over Bro, let me tell you the backstory of that movie, though. Rob Zombie didn't want to do that. The only reason that movie exists is because the studio saw how much the first one blew up, and that's why they were like, we got to do a second one. So I, I hear that, and from that perspective, I could maybe forgive him a little bit, but all the rest of his movies, because I've, I've been rewatching some stuff lately, look like he was upset at the studio for those two. <laughs> Why are you hating on Devil's Rejects, bro? Devil's Rejects has the best ending to every movie, any any movie ever. The Devil's Rejects is lit. The, I, I gotta rewatch the Devil's Rejects, but I just recently saw House of a Thousand Corpses and completely changed my mind from last podcast. You're you're just a hater. Why? Dude. What did it change? He doesn't like the fact. It, that it is terrible. Yeah, I so I try to explain him. It's a low budget movie. Yeah, yeah first I mean, movie. Dude, there is no good around director. Like, they they should have they could have walked around with shirts that had low budget on it and it would have been more discreet. <laughs> a, he's a different type of. Horror. I'm defending the fuck out of that movie because that's a classic classic and I loved it. I you know it. what? I I I could get that from a certain perspective because I love cl- Killer Clowns, but I don't think it's the best movie. I think it's like, it's like horribly great. Yeah, well, I don't think Halloween's the best movie, so take that. Dude, I just complimented Killer Clowns. <laughs> bro, you gotta take your wins where you can get them. Yeah, you like shooting below the belt here. All right, look, you can make fun of Rob Zombie's Halloween, but don't you make fun of any of the others. <laughs> <laughs> the low budget seventy eight or what? Seventy eight, man. Yeah. John Carpenter. What was that guy thinking? You could clearly see palm. You could clearly see palm trees in the back. There's no palm trees in Haddonfield, Illinois. Whatever. <laughs> I'm not going to get into this conversation. He's mad. He's mad. He's mad. <laughs> I'm getting mad. <laughs> but, uh, but back to the back to the property. In all series, no, um, yeah, no, yeah, yeah I, I think there's a lot of potential for scares, though, in um, House of Thousand Corpses as far as the, the maze it goes. As a, you know, as a maze, I don't think we were talking about House of a Thousand Corpses. <laughs> well, no, I, well, we're not we're back on subject. We're talking about the event overall, and that was the last okay. announcement. So um, we're, it's we're, kind of a transition to House of Thousand Corpses now, so. Um, yeah, yeah, let's transition to the houses in general, and then we could transition to uh, mazes. I mean, not mazes, uh, scare zone. So let's talk about uh, shared properties that we have, first of all. Um, we'll start off with the first one that we got shared, which was Stranger Things, season two and some of three. Yeah. Um, and that should be an, an amazing experience. We're going to see a lot of season two, a lot of the greatest moments of season two, and then we'll see from Murdy what he said at, over here in Hollywood. We're going to see some like a little preview bit of season three. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people are speculating it's the mall. Yeah, the mall. Yeah. I think I think it might be the underground layer. Underground layer would be cool too. Eddie, what, what are your thoughts on Stranger Things season uh, two? I, I think if they don't let us walk at least through a facade of Starport Mall, I'm going to be mildly upset because I'm really looking forward to seeing the facade at least. Yeah. Um, if we're able to walk through some of the actual like part where they're fighting the mind flare, that'd be dope. But I, I don't know. Uh, Orlando hasn't been as specific as the West Coast has been about Stranger Things. So I know over there they've kind of solidified that it's just going to be a small end scene. But in Orlando, they haven't talked about it as much. So I'm not sure if we're going to dive a little bit deeper into season three in Orlando or not. I really hope that we do because I honestly think it's the best of the three seasons by far. There's I no think comparison. it's safe to say, too, because I know the show is coming to an end next season, um, and that's just the Duffer Brothers. They never intended for this to be a, a show to go on yeah. and, and drag on. They intended it to be a four-chapter story. Um, and I think it's safe to say that because of the numbers of last year, we'll get Stranger Things for the rest of the season. So we can I, I completely agree. I think they're going to leave us with a slight teaser and leading into season three. Mm-hmm. But then... Yeah, they're 
next year they're doing season three. Yeah. And, and I, I think it's going to be a good marketing because I know they're going to start filming season four as well. Yeah. Will they get a 2020 release on season four? I think that's what they're trying to aim for because they want to end it. Yeah. Uh, so. I mean, the kid, you got to get those kids filming quick. Yeah. yeah. I think that's why they're trying to film it fast, too, is because they're all growing up and they're all hitting puberty and stuff like that. I mean, they've all hit puberty. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, I think that's what they're trying to do is just finish off strong with those kids at least until they have yeah. them as teens you know what I yeah mean? so i think and, and i think that's what complexes and makes the story a lot better because the fact that they're teens and stuff like that and they're going through all this like that's what actually tells the story of stranger things yeah opinion. yeah and it's the same actors yeah and of course we gotta have it we gotta have it turn around oh my god look at what you see wrong. <laughs> it yeah. Come on, versus, east versus west duet <laughs> i really don't know the song sing it to me i'm not moving on without you singing it to me <laughs> i don't know the song but everyone else around me seems to dusty me. buns <laughs> yeah dusty buns <laughs> um so yeah stranger things uh we can i'm gonna say i'm gonna put that uh probably number two or three on my list only because like I enjoyed it last year, so I, I just have to see what they're going to do. But I think it's going to be more than likely probably number three on my list. I don't know. Where that, I have no idea where my list is currently on things. We'll probably do another video on this. Yeah. Yeah, I got to gotta, I gotta really sit down and evaluate things. But I think that's a top five easy. Yeah. Um, yes. Next next property we're going to talk about that got announced um, shared-wise, I think, was the Universal Monsters experience that they did. Yeah. Where, of course, East Coast got Universal Monsters just in general, and we got Universal Monsters, Frankenstein versus Wolfman. Um, from what I can tell you from last year, Universal Monsters was probably the best maze at the event, hands down. Um, because it, a lot of people were close tying it with both this and Stranger Things. Yeah. So, But I, I think, hands down, my favorite maze last year was Universal Monsters. Um, so I enjoyed that, and I'm excited to see the next chapter on... Frankenstein and Wolfman. I know we only got to see Wolfman very brief in the maze, so I'm uh-huh. excited that we're going to get more Wolfman, plus, especially because I love werewolves and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that, and I'm looking forward to seeing how they make this this battle between them darker. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Obviously, Frankenstein's monster is terrifying. Yeah. Especially if they have someone that's like seven, eight feet. Yeah. Or I figure out a way to make that possible. Yeah. It'd be so much fun. Um, Eddie, what are your thoughts on uh, Universal Monsters coming to Orlando? So this one, I think um, it's one of the ones that I probably will, will not put top three on my hype list, but may end up top three once the event is over. I'm expecting a lot from it, so I, I'm trying internally not to hype it up too much. Um, but when I saw the videos from the West Coast event last year, it was one of the houses that I definitely was jealous that you guys got and we didn't, and I'm so glad that we're getting it this year. Uh, last year, Stranger Things was my number two, and uh, Poltergeist was my number one house. So I, I think, you know, putting that into perspective as far as like who's going to take over this year, I think St- Stranger Things is going to hold second place. If I had to to like tell you a list right now, and then Classic Monsters, when everything is said and done, will be my number one. Definitely. Um, yeah, like I said, Classic Monsters last year, I think over here was probably the highest rated maze. At the event next to Stranger Things, yeah. I think it was like neck and neck, and it brought reminiscent to past of House of Horrors and stuff like that, which uh, a lot of people miss. Um, so yeah, th- and that's that's the only time I've ever really experienced anything in terms of Universal mazes was House of Horrors, and that was way back. But and I loved that, I loved that, and so I'm really excited to be able to kind of experience, experience it. At, Universal yeah, Universal. and maybe have a little bit of, like, reminiscence on how that was. Yeah, so that, I think that may is, it's going to be, again, on my top three. That's probably going to be number two or three. So Stranger Things right now are tied for those places. So yeah. i got to see which one's going to be better. Yeah. Um, and you know they're saying that in the new uh, Universal Park, they may have a part of the park that's just classic monsters. They better. That'd be dope. That'd be super cool. They need right. to some homage to those guys, man. Yeah. They've set a pathway, and they pretty much launched Universal Studios, in my opinion, like, I think without those, though, that company wouldn't be absolutely as big as it is today than it is, yeah. you know what I mean? Because I think the Universal Monsters set a trailway of horror that not a lot of people saw coming at the time. And it and, absolutely terrified people. Yeah, in the well, 30s when those movies came out, like for a movie being an hour long, it terrified people. 
but the the biggest thing about classic monsters is how classic they are actually are all are and today's monsters that we see in movies are all derivatives of classic monsters yeah so you got like twilight vampires yeah we that's a classic monster you got uh what's it called teen wolf wolfman well, I would man. say, in a way, you can kind of say like Michael Myers would be a little bit based off of Frankenstein, yeah. in a way, because you could see how he's kind of one of those people who has his own mindset of what he wants to do, and like he kills people and stuff like that. Um, I know Frankenstein was a little bit different how he killed people; like he didn't know he was killing people. Yeah. But just that tall kind of person who has really like no mindset other than to kill people. It's yeah. kind of reminiscent to Michael Myers in a way. And a lot of the slashers, if you really think about it, like yeah. Jason Voorhees and all that stuff and yep. Leatherface. So, um, yeah, the, the Universal Monsters set a big pathway of, um, of horror fans, like, everywhere. And there's there's not a day that doesn't go by where people are still not talking about them today. Like, yeah. you see, like, Frankenstein posters. Like, I got one. You see the artwork everywhere. Actually, most recently, at Universal Studios Hollywood, they did a big mural in the back lot of just the classic monsters. And yeah. it looks legit, so... And Orlando oh, yeah. has the cafe. Yeah, and Orlando's oh, yeah. got that cafe. So you know, there it is, right there. Universal Studios. Universal Monsters. Classic Monsters T-shirt all day. <laughs> so yeah, there's just not a day that goes by where like they're not forgotten. They're they're they're, they're there's a they're, they're a huge stone in Universal's history, and they will never be forgotten. I think. Yeah. Um, next maze that we got announced together was Ghostbusters. Um. And this is a maze I'm very much looking forward to, only because I, I want to see how they um, achieve a lot of the effects of the ghosts. Definitely. Um, we watched that last week with Tilly B, and you know, I think a lot of people's biggest complaint was how they're going to achieve a comedy maze and like the ghosts don't look that scary. But yeah. when we, we watched it, some of the ghosts, even in the 80s, looked pretty creepy. That library ghost still looks creepy to this day. Yeah. So I'm excited to see that. Uh, Slimer looks cool. Um, and I'm excited to see how they do that. And just today, actually, or yesterday, Murdy was saying that they were doing a sculpt on Stay Puff. Yeah, Stay Puff is getting ready. So um, I'm, I'm excited to see a lot of that. And if we're going to actually see any of the Ghostbusters in the maze or if we're supposed to take on the roles as the Ghostbusters, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I think it'll I think it'll use a lot of the effects they used in uh, Stranger Things the first time. Um, not really, like, not really having, like, things scare you, but things just come out at you. That's, that's, that's kind of how Poltergeist was last year, too. Yeah, because it's like Ghostbusters is scary at times. Like it has scary moments, but it's mostly comedy. Yeah, but it's mostly comedy. So they're gonna have to really rely on like if there are Ghostbusters, those coming out of like nowhere. You'll hear a lot of funny quotes going on that would distract you from the scare. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you'll be laughing and all of a sudden someone yeah. pops out. Yeah. Of you. Eddie, what are your thoughts on uh, Ghostbusters coming to the event this year? Um, I I'm actually the more and more time I let this simmer in my head, I'm excited to see this one. I, I can only imagine what the facade is gonna look like. Uh, it would be dope if they made a facade that has, like, um, have, have you guys seen the facade for, uh, what's it called, uh, Kong? Kong Island? Yeah. yeah. So, you know how, like, they have, like, kind of like, um, they have the mountains, and they make them seem like they're mountains off in the distance, but they're really not. They're much closer. Yeah. Um, imagine if they did that with the State Puff Marshmallow Man. So, they put him out in the distance, but he looks like he's, like, really far, so he seems like he's bigger in the distance. Yeah. You kind of, like, see him, like, over the entry of the facade. That would be freaking dope. I, and I that's what I'm envisioning. Obviously, that may not be what we see, but however we run into him, it's going to be awesome. Slimer's going to be freaking crazy, and that's probably going to be some type of projection is what I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. um, but just in general, this, like, the classic monsters p paved the way for a lot of different horror movies. Yeah. Next. But um, <laughs> but I, I'm more and more excited for this property each day that goes by. So I, I think this will end up top five somewhere. I think so too. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna say that right now because uh, I, I really like the Ghostbusters. The cast is great um, for one. Um, and what would be cool since I'm going opening night if I see Bill Murray or somebody like that'd that. be super cool. Yeah, I'd be I'd, flip, I'd lose my shit. Dude. Yeah, it's Bill Murray. I, I think I'm I think I'm not going top five on this one. But I think I think it'll be close. I think like a six or a seven. There's a couple of these properties that I think are gonna surprise us more than we think. Well, I agree. I think right now it's my anticipated like six or seven. Yeah. But I think it does have potential to jump. Yeah, we're gonna do a whole video on uh, 
uh, pre what we think is on our list, and then uh, we'll do a video afterwards of uh, how it actually we'll how, probably put how, out. Yeah, how our list compare and stuff. But uh, the next uh, the next one that got announced that was a uh, coat that was shared was uh, one of my favorites, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yes. Um, this is automatically number one on my list. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think that'll change. It probably won't. Or else they do a even if it sucks terrible job. I caution. I mean, I don't anticipate they'll do a terrible I job. I don't think they will either. But I think this, I think, yeah, no matter what, they'll stay number one for you. Like, Arasa just did, like, something yeah. completely stupid. Yeah. Um, I'm really much looking forward to this. There's a lot of scenes I want to see. I um, mean, we've done a whole video on uh, an East versus West on talking about this subject. But there's a lot of there's a lot of different scenes that I want to see that are iconic in the film. And uh, I'm, I'm really hoping they do a good job bringing them to life. Um, from projections to, of course, um, the clowns themselves. Um, smells and stuff like that. Going through the spaceship, going through yeah, the yeah, cotton candy everywhere. Yeah, that's uh, that's a lot of the a lot of what I what I've been hearing. A lot of people have been saying that like a lot of the smells in this maze are gonna be cotton candy and popcorn, which I'd be completely yeah. Because I mean they shoot popcorn like to get they shoot the popcorn, popcorn guns, guns and then the cotton candy cocoons. So yeah, that'd be really cool. Um, Eddie, you had this as a scare zone last year. What are your thoughts of it returning as a house this year? The scare zone was the best by far last year. So I am really looking for it. I mean, you and I were both calling for it after opening night of the event. Yeah. I, I think both you and I, when we talked maybe like a few days after opening night, we said, yo, kill your clowns next year house. Mm-hmm. And it happened. Uh, and we, we talked about it the same way that trick or treat kind of came into fruition. We, we, we envisioned it and it happened. Yeah. And now I'm really excited to actually walk through it. I just hope they really pull off the tent facade really well. I want to feel like I'm walking into a larger than life uh, circus tent. Definitely. And go ahead. yeah, and I think like you, Eddie and Tony here, you guys really demanded it. But I think the entire community really was like, "Yes, we need this because it's yeah. got such a cult following. It has it has that comedy aspect to it too, mm-hmm. um, which I think is also going to make it a little bit more terrifying." Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, even when we on our, our interview with John Mazzari on the podcast, he was saying people were just literally staying in that scare zone, going yeah. out of their way because it was out of the way. And, and another thing that another fun fact we should bring up with that one is he even said before he did the movie, uh, there was no music and the movie was scary. Yeah, it, it had like none of that comedy aspect. Where as when they added the music, like. It gave more of a suspense and comedy aspect. Yeah. But he said there was just some scenes where, like, especially when they're walking down into the fog and stuff, going into the yeah. Crescent Cove, like, that scene was just terrifying because, like, you just have one clown that looks back at you and it's like, okay, that's, yeah, that's pretty terrifying. You know, you just see a clown do that and they just walk towards a, a fogged street. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel that we're going to see a lot. And what would be cool is, like, um, Back to that scene when they're walking in the fog, like it'd be cool if there's a room where it's us walking through the fog, and then the clowns pop out of us one at a time. And you just see Crescent Cove, the sign right there, and we walk into the town yeah. and we see all the mayhem and stuff, which I think would be yeah, cool. it'll be really cool because they'll use the low lying fog. Yeah, <laughs> low lying fog. Yeah, fog. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to that. The last maze that we got announced for oh no, this is the second to last um, that we got announced for both coasts was um, us. So, so us was, was actually one, one that you were looking forward to a lot. Yeah, I mean, check out our check out the other episode I am on versus East versus West. Yeah, for a lot more of my breakdown. But but, but even prior to that, that like we, we we would just talk. Just, yeah, you know, I st- off camera. And just, yeah. I still like, want it to be the opening scare buddy, even though I know it's already been confirmed it's not. Yeah, which it would be cool. And we, we talked, talked about that with TLD that that would be amazing. Yeah, it's not um, gonna happen because they're doing the scare zone, uh, yeah, the spirits, spirits and, of the East. Yeah, yeah, but I really wanted that to be the, even if that was the Terror Tram exit, uh, just, yeah. there's so much I want from that, and I really hope it doesn't disappoint. Definitely. Like, I'm going to probably cry if it disappoints. Um, I mean, I probably won't, but. So Jordan Peele's horror is coming to life this year at Halloween Horror Nights for both coasts. Eddie, thoughts on the Us movie and thoughts on the maze of what, uh, what you're looking forward to? Is this our, our last shared property? No, we have one more after this. One more? Okay, cool. Um... So the movie I enjoyed, but you know I shared my opinion. I didn't think it lived up to the hype. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a good movie, but it wasn't as great as this has created itself. 
how do I stop these damn texts from coming through my damn laptop? <laughs> oh, that's what they're coming through. I didn't realize. I thought it was like, silence your phone. No, it's my damn laptop that's connected to my phone, and I don't know how to stop it. I uh, just, yeah, yeah, I think you could sign out of the thing, but I don't know. You just want to do that. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, no, 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 I wish I could. I just don't know how to do it right now, but focus, focus. Um, Us was, was a, a good movie once again. I, I didn't think, this is the crazy part to me. This movie came out this year and is already in Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah. So, kudos to to the director. Jordan Dude Peele. is... Huh? Jordan Peele. Yeah, yeah, Jordan Peele. Yeah, I, I know his name. I, I just no, assume you, everybody no, you listening didn't. knows no, his name, didn't. too. No, you didn't. Yeah. Oh, please. Yeah, oh, yeah, I forgot Jordan Peele's name. My bad. Now he's saying it like crazy oh, yeah. to remember it. I thought it was cute. cute. It's, it's like, like that one scene in Star Wars, uh, freaking Family Guy. He goes, I didn't forget your name, C3PO. You remember C3PO? I know your name, C3PO. You know <laughs> C3PO? <laughs> but hats off, to, hats off to him. That's a hell of an accomplishment. Definitely. So, um, I mean, it coming as a maze, I, I could see it translating into a maze. I, I, I guess I'm just being a bit of a, of a pessimist when it comes to this one. But, I mean, it... It it has the potential to be a, a great maze. I don't see it hitting my top five for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, definitely. I think us is gonna be. I think it's gonna be a good maze, um, especially because they're gonna do a lot of mirror fest and stuff like that to yeah. kind of accomplish the tethered look. There's a lot of good scenes in that movie, from of course the uh, the, the scene when the, when they first get introduced. And the, and the fires yeah, if her accent is there, yeah. I'm going to like be terrified. I think they'll they'll have an audio. Because that audio is creepy. Yeah, they'll have an audio cue of an actor lipping that and stuff like that, which would be good. Um, the scene, of course, when we get introduced to more tethered outside yeah. of the family, um, that would be a good creepy scene to see. Of course, uh, Jeremiah eleven eleven dude is terrifying. Yeah, and I think he's gonna be, if I'm not mistaken, I. Don't know if it was that maze or another maze, but that was going to be the maze they have the passcode this year. For. I thought it was Ghostbusters. Was it, was it Ghostbusters? Okay. Yeah, but it, they should have done the passcode for that one because I would have loved. Eleven, eleven. Yeah, have him stand out front of the maze. I don't know if you're familiar with the passcode. Are you familiar with the passcode? Yeah, yeah. That they did it. I know they did it one year with the purge. They did it one year with the purge. The purge. They did it one year with Insidious. Insidious. They did it one year with This Is the End. Yeah, and you go getting... give them a password, and they give you like basically a piece yeah, of merch or something. So it all started at first with, of course, um, just random like HHN people dressed up and they were just like you know they had speakers and stuff and they were just kind of employees like you kind of knew they were employees yeah. and then Murdy got more creative where he in- included a scare actor into it where you give the code to a scare actor and he'll give you something yeah um what do they pull it out of that was the one thing I wanted to um sometimes like when they did cramp this one year they had uh it was a mailman so he had a bag um they did the purge the guy had a clipboard so he had all the stuff on the clipboard um, when they did Insidious, it was Tucker and Specs outside, and all they gave them was a business card. So they were all outside just handing out business cards as we gave them the code. Um, and then previous years, they had the uh, employees just pull out like a, a bag or something like that. Yeah, because you got like a hat, right? Yeah, I got a I got a purge hat, I got a purge pamphlet, and I got a James Franco "This Is the End" um, invitation uh, to his party, which are really cool. I got like yeah. three of them actually. Yeah, so, that's um, so dope. Yeah. Yo, this year, just a little inside scoop. The, the word is, have you been Eddie Taint? Oh, yeah. Dude, you should do that. Like, if anyone notices you at any of the uh, events, like, if you want to give away those those keychains, like, come up to me and, like, give me the code and I'll give you something. You know what I mean? That'd be cool. That'd be good. Yeah. Cause Cause what, what you just want everyone to say, have you been Eddie Taint? What, what will yours be, Anthony? Um, we should do it. We should both do it. And the challenge will be how many, how many people identify us. I think every – well, it depends because we're going to a bunch of haunts. So I think every haunt we should have a new code. Yeah. Like something that's relevant to the channel that we've said a lot or just like it's a catchphrase or something. Like obviously yeah. the first code that we go to uh, for Horror Nights would be like Madhouse or, or something like that. Or like pinch my left cheek. Not the right one though. Just the left one. Another, another <laughs> night that we go to like Knots or something like that could be like a dose of both coasts. Nah, yeah. For Knots, it'll be <laughs> – Scare Sam. <laughs> scare, hashtag Scare Sam. Yeah. Uh, so not to be Scare Sam, but like one of the events we could do Dose of Both Coasts. Maybe HHN because yeah. we're going multiple nights. Um, so that would be cool. Yeah. Uh, um, passwords in the works. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're going to do unofficial passwords at fucking at the events this year and probably get kicked out. But, you know, it will be worth it. <laughs> hey, anything for content. Anything for content. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually taking that into consideration. So, guys, if you're watching, we'll have a passcode every night on our Twitter. Uh, every event that we go to, and we'll let you know a week ahead of time 
at what event we're going to, and then the night before, I'll give out that passcode. And if you find either me or Sam or Tammy or Robert at any of the events, say the passcode to them, and uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure we'll be together. Hey, challenge if you find me. Yeah, challenge if you find Sam. But, you know, it won't be that be like, who needs gas money? <laughs> who needs gas money? Uh, the last shed property that we got, of course, House of a Thousand Corpses, returning through uh, HHN for the fourth year. Not yeah. consecutively, but just yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's Bro, to it's going to be terrifying. The movie may be bad, but it's amazing. I need terrifying. one of those like low whistles there. <laughs> um, I'm very much looking forward to this coming back because, like, the first year I went to HHN was in 2011, and it was there. I wasn't too familiar with the movie at the time, but now I'm really familiar with it, and now I know there's a lot of stuff that I want to see after watching it on Saturday. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see that. And I know me and you are, are supposed to be doing a marathon um, pretty soon, uh, just because 3 from House coming out. Yeah. So we were going to do a House of Thousand Courses Devil Rejects uh, little binge before we go see uh, 3 from Hell, which I'm going to get our tickets for next week. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm very much looking forward. And also... The way I look at this, it's a marketing opportunity for people to go see Three from Hell, um, only because that's going to wrap up the trilogy of the Devil's Rejects. Um, so, I'm really much looking forward to seeing uh, this maze again. Um, it's gritty, uh, different style horror and stuff like that, and uh, a lot of the iconic scenes that we were talking about um, from Captain Spaulding's uh, sideshow attraction. Yeah, the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, the Museum of Murders. Um, so of course the Firefly House. The Dark Ride. <laughs> the Dark Ride. Bless your face. I was uh, warning you. And Dr. <laughs> Satan at the end? Dr. Satan, so it should be good. Yeah. Eddie, you've seen this movie. You don't like this movie, but what are you looking forward to in this maze? So this is what I'll say. Yeah, I, I, I rewatched the movie, and I, lo- I liked it a lot less than I thought I actually did. Um, but what I can say about this house is that I think it actually may be the scariest house. may not be the best house. But it's probably going to be the goriest and have some of, like, the nastiest scares that, like, you know, there's going to be, like, nasty thing that uh, nasty things that you're looking at that are going to distract you from the scare that's coming up. Yeah. So I think it can potentially be the scariest house. But, yeah, I'm not a fan of the director or the movie, really. So... I'll leave it he's at got, that. He's got double what? Rob Zombie this year. Yeah, too. he's got double Rob Zombie. I, I know. Yeah. What the hell? What did I do? It, it wasn't it a, It was a maze before it was so, a movie, right? Or they were made around the same time. So I was reading more of the history of that. Um, in 2000, this was an original because maze that I think Rob Zombie collabed with to do for yeah. um, Horror Nights. And actually, uh, per Mr. E or Thomas or someone, um, he told us last week that they were actually the movie was set to come out in 2000, but didn't come out until 2003. Yeah. So the movie was already made, and like Murdy, he gets or like usually early access to scripts and stuff like that, so he can start working on a maze. So they made this into a maze at the event in 2000. Uh, the movie didn't come out until 2003, but it was a hit at the event. And then when the movie was out for a couple years, they brought it back to the event in 2010 and 2011. Um, and now they're bringing it back for a fourth year, which yeah. uh, which is cool. Not yeah. in 3D though. Thank God. Yeah, this this year won't be in 3D. I'm not saying it was a bad thing, but I like seeing where I'm going and not falling. So yeah, I mean, but, I mean, I don't mean to be moving back to what we were talking about in the beginning, but in terms of Curse of Pandora's box, they're going to be using a lot of like interesting lighting. Yeah, and I, I know they used a lot of interesting lighting when they did House of a Thousand Corpses in 3D. So they're going to be using a lot of like technology, especially like UV, UV lighting and things yeah. like that, which is going to really make the maze cool. And I think that was one thing I really did enjoy that I forgot to mention earlier. Um, all right, we're going to move on to our original properties now. We have, well, what? Either original or exclusive to our event. Yeah. Because one of them is actually an IP. Yeah. Um, we have a total of, well, do you guys have a Walking Dead experience over there or no? No, absolutely not. Hey, when, okay. you, when you're like kind of tucking your head to the side and reading down, you're like, your voice is going away from the mic completely. Your face. Yeah, there you go. It's like, anyway. It sounds like that way. Um, ASMR. We have a total of four original and two, or two original two IPs uh, at the event this year. One that's a full day attraction, but I still have to talk about The Walking Dead. Uh, I'm contractually, I'm contractually obligated to talk about yes, it. Yes, more zombies than ever. Yeah. Contractually. Contractually obligated to talk about it. English is the second language, people. Forget. Hey, English is my first language. I struggle with it. I'm sorry. Anyway, yeah, I'm still learning. Uh, well, we're gonna bounce yeah. off. You have four originals as well. 
Uh, I, I believe so. Okay, so we'll go back and forth, um, and I'll let you start with your first original. Alrighty, so my first original is Nightingale's Blood Pit. So this house has some history with Halloween Horror Nights. Um, the Nightingales have been at Halloween Horror Nights before in different formats. So this time around, um, back in, in, in its original form, Halloween Horror Nights is bringing a lot more blood to this year's event. And I, I think these ladies are gonna gonna add to it. They're like a like a like a banshee crazy type of like demon that that is on Earth. And uh, basically, they're taking us back to Greek mythology again. Um, the like time of like uh, what's it called, like uh, Spartans and shit like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Colosseums. Gosh, yeah. I'm gonna. English is like really escaping. Gladiators? Me. Gladiators, there you go. Was that more That's Roman? Cool. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's all the same thing. Okay. Isn't Roman. I don't know. Listen here, all right? History, this isn't bro. School. All right, this isn't school, okay? It's the school of HHN. What are you talking about? What? It's school of hard this, this, knocks, this the, bro. This is the school of HHN. What are you talking about? Yeah. Leave me alone. This is our college uh, course in HHN history, bro. So I, I throw it, go ahead and throw another original out there because I, I in the in the beginning we did talk about Pandora's box. So okay, um, uh, the next original that was announced was Depths of Fear, um, and this is the house that everybody was assuming from the speculation that it was going to be a Jaws house, and I wish it would have been because that would have been crazy. Uh, <laughs> that would have been. I just don't know how they could pull that off. I don't know either, but. It would have been sick. Like, well, they tell me, use, like the fog that they use, like knots for that. Uh, okay. Depths. Look, tell me this. Tell me this. I, I know me personally. Are you a Jaws fan? I love Jaws. Okay, Sammy, are you a Jaws fan? Yeah, I like Jaws. John Williams has okay. a, won a great score in there. All right. So think about this, right? If they announced a Jaws house, released no image besides just like the fin and the water, or the the girl swimming right above the water and him coming from below. And then gave you no description of what it was going to be like. Would you still go to it? Yeah, I yeah, it's definitely. Be a thing, yeah, but however, exactly. I exactly. just think it doesn't. You don't need to know how they're going to pull it off. No, you just I just want to think it, how they're going to pull it off. It's one of those movies that it's it's a good horror movie nonetheless, but it's it wouldn't be a good maze. No, I think it would be it? great. I think that line would be like three hours the first night, and oh, when it disappoints, people, people are going to be so mad. No, and, and the only reason I bring that up is because the fact that um, Murdy and Ayala both said for Get Out. Like, people were suggesting Get Out as Maze. It's a great horror movie, nonetheless. Don't get me wrong. I love Get Out. That's one of my favorite horror movies, but it wouldn't be good as Maze. Yeah, you just sit there with the lady with the tea? Yeah. Nobody wants a bunch of white people trying to kill them. <laughs> Cutting out their brains and putting in them in a, in bodies and stuff like that. They're like, come here, minority. I love your body. Yep. <laughs> We'd be dead, bro. But, uh, like I said, but, uh, I just don't think right, a Jaws that's maze that's would, that's would work. What? I just That's my better thought. I just don't think a Jaws maze would work. But as much, I'd, I'd be interested in seeing it, though. But you would go. A sea creature monsters, a sea creature monsters maze yeah. is a little bit better. Like a, at knots today. Yeah. No, we don't know this. We don't know this. Yes, we do know this because we went to Not Scary Farm last year and they had the dips, and that's exactly what that was. A secret you didn't go through a Jaws house? You have not. Hey, bro, next year. I know that because it's never happened. <laughs> first, first, first HHN 2020 speculation, Jaws house. Yep. Um, so that's that's our second. Um, and basically they talk about these, basically the, these monsters below the water that are going to make your skin crawl. And it's basically these guys that were working in a submersible and ends up getting stuck, and then we're we're walking through that that wreckage. It's like a mining company or something. Yeah, that sounds pretty interesting. I'm looking forward to that. I I, I would like to see some content. I know they're very strict over there with filming mazes, and they're actually going to be doing that over here a lot too. So. Oh yeah, they're extremely strict in in Orlando. Actually, last year when I was in the media tour, uh, one of the people that I was with actually like almost got tackled because he was filming, even though we had. We had the right to film because we had our, our media passes, yeah. but the it's dark inside the maze, so the security guards don't see it. Yeah. And like the security guard like grabbed his freaking gimbal and like pinned them up against the wall. And then when we got outside of the of the house, it was actually the the Halloween house. When we got outside of the house, he t he told the tour guide they actually went back into the house, got the security guard from the scene, and made him come back outside and apologize. 
Damn. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. That's some commitment <laughs> yeah. right there. Fucking shout out. Kudos to that freaking tour guide right you made there. Made him go right inside right. and come. Oh, I'm no, sorry. Yeah. Universal does not play with their media members. Like they treat them like gold. They have to because that's their fucking. That's their revenue right there. That's who gets the yeah. word out right there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the event's already big as it is, but if you hear other opinions from other things, like that's the, that's how they get noticed and stuff like that. So, um, all right. Well, we're gonna go over. To, we're gonna go over to um. <laughs> Come down over there. What's his name? Rick Dalton. Rick Dalton. <laughs> uh, uh, an exclusive that's coming over here. Um, that was announced uh, right after Stranger Things. Holidays in Hell. Looks beautiful. Um, did you see any footage of the scare zone last year? I did not see the scare zone. It's on Nights of Horror if you want to check it out. Oh, yeah, check it out. Link in the description below. Link in the description below. How do you spell that? Um, K N I G N. Yeah. Uh, but nonetheless, we, we, we went through it last year and it was a very fun scare zone. Um, I love the whole idea of taking holidays and making, giving them a twist. And I really loved his idea of like looking at like super like. With Victorian postcards, I think he said. Yeah. And trying to make those really come to life. Um, so that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, we're going to go through, of course, a lot of the big holidays. I think we're going to try to go through all the holidays, but I've only heard the major ones. You're going like New Year's. I heard New Year's, Christmas, Christmas? Um, Halloween, Halloween, obviously. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Uh, July. Easter. Easter. Uh, St. Paddy's Day. St. Paddy's Day. So that's seven. That is the one where they're going to have the, the Tooth Bunny and the Easter Fairy, right? <laughs> you, you guessed it. <laughs> you got them all, bro. You got them all. Uh, I ruined it. No. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to this um, only because it's it's, it's going to be beautiful, too. I think, like, yeah. all the artwork in it is going to be really well, beautiful. And, and especially just, like, when he when he talked about the effects for uh, the 4th of July scene, Yeah. I got hyped because it sounds like it's going to take a little nod from what they did in the Universal Monster scene when they had Frankenstein and Brighter Frankenstein where you flipped the switch and the whole thing blew up. Those effects were beautiful, how they pulled that off. And they're so, going to have their own original firework names? Yeah, which look they look legit. Yeah. They look cool. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to that maze. I can't wait to uh, experience that again, this time in maze form and more of a detailed story. Um, so that would be pretty cool. Eddie, next original at the event. Uh, next original for Orlando is Face the Brutal Beast of the Yeti I'm in to that. Terror of the Yukon. Looking forward yeah. to that one a lot. Yeah, and can I say one thing? Go for it. Losh, if you're listening right now, he keeps on pronouncing it Yukon in his freaking videos. <laughs> 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 and every time I'm like, why do you pronounce it that way, dude? It's Yukon. Terror of the Yukon, okay? Uh, why you K O N? Why you gotta why you gotta hate on the way he pronounces stuff? I, know, I just I, I just had to put him out there. But um <laughs> while he's closing at work right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, the, this is one that I, I think is going to land in my top five. I don't know. There's something. There's something about the the history of like Yetis and uh, you know that with Bigfoots and basically talking about like how they have like kind of like special powers, which is part of the reason why we've never like found them because some of them could actually like uh, what's it called? They they could actually uh, uh, like camouflage and whatnot. Yeah. And um, I, I don't know. I, I'm a I'm a fan of like Bigfoot and and Yeti, so this one I think is going to be a cool one. And I can only imagine, kind of like what you were talking about, having like a, a larger than life like Frankenstein, like an eight foot person or a seven foot person. Imagine like a seven foot Yeti yeah. coming out of like coming out of the wall. Definitely, that would be super cool. Um, yeah, I'm I'm very intrigued to see how they pull this off as far as the Yeti goes. If they're going to do animatronic puppets or they're going to have actual people dress up as them. Both. Both would be cool. Um, both coasts. I'm, I'm curious to see <laughs> the both coasts. Uh, I'm just gonna steal, so, steal the idea from the Matterhorn. Yeah. Boom. Those guys are pretty scary. The Matterhorn. You're gonna take the Yeti from the Matterhorn. They yeah. bought it. They bought it. <laughs> they bought it for a lot of money. Um, yeah, that one sounds interesting. I'm very much looking forward to seeing how that looks as far as the Yeti goes. Cause yeah. I love I love Yetis too. Those are those are. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're like your brother, aren't they? Yeah. You had your own, man. Uh, I just know it's my cousin. Yeah. I know them all, bro. It's all in the family, dog. Um, our last uh, original... Well, we have another one. Walking Dead attraction. That's always a key event. Bro, more zombies than ever. More zombies than ever. Um, but our last one I got an <laughs> announced um, is Creepshow. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Creepshow looks like it's going to be good. Oh, uh, It looks fantastic. I am looking forward to Creepshow. Um, it's an anthology series movie. 
Um, great, uh, Greg Nicotero, former producer of The Walking Dead, is making and developing the Shutter series, producing it. Um, and he teamed up with John to bring a couple stories to life. Yeah, the last um, two. Yeah, and it, it should be on Shutter by the time the event comes around. I think. No, I think so. For opening night, no, but for m- most of the run, yes. Yeah, for like I think it's coming out like the second, back end of the like second the, week of October, I believe, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, for the back end, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, and then they're doing, of course, inspiration off the original movie as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. This is actually a Stephen King property. Yeah. Not a lot of people know that. But Stephen King did this graphic novel, which he took a lot of idea from T- Tales from the Crypt. And um, from that 50s comic, wasn't it? Wasn't there a comic, too? The only one I could think of. Was, oh, well, he's talking about he's talking about the style. Yeah. It was based off a comic because the movies was based off a comic and... Um, the comics, obviously, a comic. So he's gonna take a lot of yeah. of those aspects and put them into this main. And the facade looks super cool. Definitely. Um, yeah. Walking there, into the book. There's a facade that came out and it looks amazing, and uh, we can't wait. Um, Eddie, hit him with your uh, last two or one. Or My one. last one is Graveyard Games, which um, this one is a cool new approach at haunts at Halloween Hornets. Um, first and foremost, you got cemeteries. And you got Ghost. Terrible. But you got a, a pretty cool backstory that kind of hints back to the early days of Halloween Horror Nights where you had a good amount of backstory. But this one's going to be an interactive backstory. Um, so basically, there's these two kids that are playing games in the graveyard and accidentally end up awakening uh, the, the spirits, which basically they end up feeling the repercussion for what they did. And through Facebook Messenger, you're actually going to be able to interact with some of the storytellers and children of the the town where this graveyard is at. So I, I look forward to seeing what that interaction is like and how in-depth it is, like how responsive are they going to be? Like, can you throw any question at them and they have a response? Or is it just going to be like generic responses to very simple questions? Definitely. Uh, that that'll be something cool. This is this is something that I'm definitely looking forward to. It's it's a different approach at horror at Halloween Horror Nights, and um, I, I know it's received kind of mixed reviews, but I I'm, I'm looking forward to this one myself. Yeah, definitely. Um, that one sounds good, and I like the interactiveness behind that one, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, before we end this quick, uh, we'll do a quick run of the scare zones we got over here in Hollywood. Fallen Angels, uh, Spirits and Demons of the East. Um, Holidays in Hell, the section of for uh, Christmas. Yeah. Um, we have um, All Hollows Evil. Yeah. And I believe that's it, right? Toxic. Toxic Tunnel. Yeah, with three X's. I don't know why, but okay. Uh, Toxic Tunnel is uh, coming back. Um, cool. So those are a quick rundown of our scare zones and stuff. Um, like I said, if you want to go review any of these uh, videos, uh, we have, of course, the East versus West um, on the Halloween Horror Nights playlist. Um, so go ahead and check them out if you want to see what we've talked about in 2019. But, uh, Eddie, quick rundown of all your scare zones. We got Vikings Undead. We got Vanity Ball. We got Anarcade. Rob Zombie's Hellbilly Deluxe. And Zombieland Double Tap. That's so all of them sound pretty damn amazing. Um, and I've seen already some of the construction uh, photos of the mazes. Yeah. And you can already see the Hellbilly deluxe uh, signs and like stuff cover yeah. art yeah is actually part of like the facade when you enter it so it looks pretty cool all of them are pretty amazing i, I look forward to doing like individual videos for each one of these ladies and gentlemen hhn as of this recording starts in a little under a month yeah we're less than a month away now less than a month away about we're like three, 20 days three three four weeks i believe yeah because we the away. 12th is when we're opening for fan trivia night we're opening. 13th is this is the official day. opening day. So, yeah, we're a little under a month away, guys, and it's looking like a stacked event. Quick recap today. We talked, of course, about our the new announcement for um, Hollywood, the Curse of Pandora's box, an original maze coming to the event this year. Then we did a quick rundown of each maze coming to uh, both Hollywood and Orlando, which is Stranger Things, Us, Ghostbusters, a Universal Monsters adaptation of some sort, which is for them it's Universal Monsters, for us it's Universal Monsters Frankenstein vs. the Wolfman Killer Clowns from Outer Space and House of a Thousand Corpses, and then over here in Hollywood we talked about Creep Show and Holidays in Hell, uh, we gave Walking Dead a little mention but you know, More zombies than ever More zombies than ever um, And then Eddie, drop him with that knowledge of what you talked about for Orlando's side 
before I get there, let me actually say one last thing that was announced, which um, I think is actually going to be pretty cool, which is the Halloween Marathon of Mayhem, the Lagoon show that's coming to Halloween Horror Nights in yeah. Universal Studios Orlando. Yep. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have seen any videos of it, but they have like these water projection screens where they basically, it's a fountain show, but they project different images onto it. And the the, the photo that they have that's basically all over the, the internet looks pretty dope with the State Puff Marshmallow Man. Yeah. Um, and like Slimer, you got the what's it called? The uh, Killer Clowns. Every, everything's on there. So I, I look forward to seeing that. That's going to be amazing. Uh, but yeah, uh, the guys and I, we talked about something earlier today that I had heard about through the grapevine. Um, some speculation for next year's event that's going to impact this year's event. So basically, in preparation for next year's event, uh, Halloween Horror Nights is no stranger to kind of giving a few little Easter eggs throughout the event, as well as the last either day or few days of the event, dropping some little Easter eggs. In the past, they've done like a, either like a, a pop-up scare zone um, for a a, uh, a host to the event that was coming up the next year or other little things. And this year, there's some speculation that the Killer Clowns from Outer Space House or Maze is gonna have a visitor and that visitor is uh specific to halloween horror nights in orlando it'd be cool if you guys got it as well um which is jack they're saying next year is the 30th uh, anniversary year for halloween horror nights in orlando so Mm -hmm. having jack show up in our clown tent would be dope um and would be a great send-off for the halloween season in preparation for uh, the thirtieth year of Halloween Horror Nights in Orlando. Um, you, you guys want me to just go to the next part, or go to the you, next you one. Wanna... Keep them coming. Keep them coming on those final thoughts. Okay, perfect. And then uh, the the next one is um, you got the Academy of Villains that is going to be in the uh, the same stage that uh, we've had other performers, and there's a specific performer that they're they're also speculating may come back for that last night which is Bill and Ted, um, kind of, uh, once again, in preparation for the 30th year of Halloween Horror Nights, you got that movie that's coming out, which makes them extremely relevant again. And for a while now, the fans have been calling for their return. Um, I, I think, I haven't seen a show come up after the, the end of Bill and Ted that people have been complimentary of for the majority Every show has been met with a lot more criticism than, hey, this is better than Bill and Ted. Definitely. Um, yeah, the, yeah. That, those are those sound like good surprises, and I hope they come true. That way it sets up HHN 2020 next year. Um, so that's going to do it for this episode of East vs. West. It's a stacked lineup. Super stacked. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to it. The event starts in a little under two or three weeks now. Um, me and Tammy will be there opening night. Uh, we are still discussing on when Sammy's going to be there. Yeah, because uh, we've got a busy schedule after schedule that. Schedule after that. Um, so, yeah, look forward to that. Look forward to more episodes of East versus West outside of HHN. We're thinking about uh, bringing back the, of course, Knots versus um, Hollow Bush, Scream. Bush Gardens Hollow Scream. So, uh, expect that later on, maybe after the announcement event, hopefully. Hopefully. We'll, uh, we'll do a compare and contrast on those. Um, if Eddie decides he wants to go to the Dark Horizon event that's going on in or Florida or he we wants to a, check it out or you got Dark Harbor here got Dark Harbor here so that's another East versus West opportunity um, there's a lot of good stuff coming in the future so uh, stay tuned to that thank you for this uh, thank you for stay tuned and watching this uh, extended long version of East versus West coming nearly at an hour um, yeah there was a lot to talk about and we had to give you our thoughts so this is our thoughts going into it uh, be sure to tune in either next week or whenever. We'll do a, our, we'll give a time to rank our mazes of what we think is going to be best from worst. Yeah. And we'll share our thoughts on that. Another episode of East versus West. That'd be uh, fun. So uh, tune in next week for that episode because that would be very fun to do. And you know why? Because this is the only channel where you can get, get the dose, dose of, of both coasts. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for constantly supporting East versus West. We love making them and we love releasing them. Um, so we will see you guys next week. Uh, so until then, stay scary. Stay.